How's it going guys? Welcome to the Sire Guide. This video explains various gear setups and strategies that you can choose from depending on your stats and budget. The screen will have timestamps for the various sections of the guide so always refer to this part of the video when you need to visit specific parts of the guide in the future. The Abyssal Sire is a level 85 Slayer boss that can only be killed when assigned an Abyssal Demon task. The Sire is famous for dropping the three bludgeon parts to make the Abyssal Bludgeon and the Abyssal Dagger which are useful for Iron Man and as a main account you can sell it for a lot of money. So before I get into the different gear setups and strategies to do Sire, I will explain the mechanics of Sire. Sire has many different mechanics that you should be aware of and deal with properly. Also understanding the environment of Sire is very important, which I will explain shortly. The area of Sire contains three environmental components, the boss itself, the respiratory systems, and the tentacles. There are three core phases of Sire and each phase has their own mechanics and strategies. So the phase one of Sire is to kill the respiratory system and getting Sire out of its idle phase. So you want to kill the four respiratory systems that are in the room, two on the left and two on the right. To deal damage to the respiratory systems, you have to wake up the boss by attacking him with any long distance attack and then using a shadow spell to disorientate him. If he is disorientated, you can attack the respiratory system. The room has tentacles that will attack players and stop you from attacking the respiratory systems. And they can hit pretty hard up to 30s if Sire is not disorientated. In most cases, you're going to have to disorientate Sire twice using Shadow Barrage. Shadow Barrage will 100% disorientate the boss. However, if you plan to use weaker shadow spells, there is a chance that you will fail to disorientate it. And Sire can spawn poison or minions during this phase if you wake it up but you take too long to disorientate it after it wakes up using a shadow spell, usually after failing two shadow spells on him. The recommended weapons to deal with the respiratory system is either a blowpipe or a fast and long ranging weapon like the crystal bow imbued a crossbow or a third age bow. To use the bows effectively though, you need to learn what to stand and how to move from one system to the other, which I will explain in the first fighting demonstration in this video. After killing the respiratory systems, you will engage Sire in a one-on-one -on -one fight. So Sire has various attacks at its disposal. He will use at least one of the listed attacks every 4.2 seconds so he attacks quite slow so I highly recommend that when you do this part you go for two attacks and go under the boss that way you can stop the boss from attacking and you wait for your weapon cooldown to uh, run out so you can go right back into the fight and it'll also skip a lot of attacks from this boss which is really good because you'll save yourself a lot of food and taking a lot of damage so it has a few melee attacks a hand swipe and two styles of whip attacks the double whip attack can hit 50s and it will be cut in half if you use melee prayer so make sure you have melee prayer on during this fight because it will save you a lot of damage. Another attack that it can do is spawn a poison pool under you. So the poison pool will take out one tile and in order to completely dodge it you have to move two steps away from it in any direction. If you get caught by the poison it will hit you for over 10s constantly and it will also poison you as well with an A base poison damage. The final thing that it can do during this phase is spawning minions. Instead of using its other attacks listed, it will spawn a minion. And the minion can attack you with ranger melee. The minion in its immediate form is really weak and only has 10 HP. But if you leave it alone, it will gradually evolve into a stronger one that can hit around 10s which can be a threat, especially if you have lower defense. You can either kill the minion quickly or just ignore it. Sometimes it can spawn a few extra minions during this phase, so it's up to you whether or not you want to tank all of them or just you know kill the second one that comes out. Once Sire reaches 200 HP, you will always have to do another hit to push him into the third and final phase. It doesn't matter what hit is, just you have to hit it again and it'll move on to the third phase and final phase. 
After Sire goes under 200 HP, he will move towards the middle of the overall map, and he's going to stay there for the rest of the fight. It's very important that you try to do this third phase as fast as possible because the minions will evolve over time, and they will get stronger, and there's a ton of them, so they can do lots of damage very quickly. The moment when he reaches the middle and starts charging, the poison puddle will start spawning under you, so you have to move away. And it will continue to spawn every 3-4 to four seconds around. And there's a limit to how many times it'll spawn consecutively. I think it's like around 4, 5 or 6, give or take. But yeah, just be on the lookout for the poison spawns in general. After getting the boss down between 130 to 140 hit points, it will unleash a teleport explosion combination attack where once you get teleported if you stand next to the boss for too long and you don't move it'll hit you for up to 70 plus so an easy way to dodge it is once you get teleported just simply run south about 45 steps and you will completely negate that explosion damage doing this phase effectively requires a great understanding of where to stand and how to move around while damaging the boss to avoid the poison's tentacle and minimizing the minion damage. This part will be shown explained in the first fighting demonstration of the video. Before I get into the different setups and how to actually fight the boss using the different setups, let's talk about stat requirements. So on the combat related side, I recommend 85 plus attack, strength, and defense. For magic, I recommend at least 76 so you can use shadow blitz. But in all honesty, I recommend 92 plus, so that way you can use Shadow Barrage. At 94, you can use Blood Barrage, which makes the non-rejuvenation pool method slightly easier to do, so you can heal faster. For range, I recommend 85 plus. Of course, you need 85 Slayer, because you have to be on task for Episode Demons anyways to do the task. And other requirements are, if you are using Rejuvenation Pool, you're going to have to get at least 82 Construction. That way you can get a boost to get to 90 to make the rejuvenation pool the best one. That is going to be a saw and a plus 5 boost from the stew. And for an Iron Man, you might want to make some stamina potions for Sire, especially if you don't have the pool. And that's going to require 77 Herbler, although you can boost easy at 76. Or if you want to try to do plus 5 boost, you can do that as well at 72. It is time to get into the different methods of killing Sire and explaining the nuances between each one. The main difference for the methods besides obviously the gear cost is whether or not you have rejuvenation pool. Non-rejuvenation pool method requires stamina potions and the ability to heal using blood burst or blood barrage as you will try to minimize banking or teleporting out. Another important thing to note is that you can kill all the respiratory systems and quickly use a rejuvenation pool to run back to Sire while he's getting out of his resting spot. This will save you a lot of time because the animation from him transitioning from phase 1 to 2 actually takes a lot of time. I'll be showing you four different setups. The first one's budget melee without pool. The second one's going to be high level melee without pool. The third one's going to be high level melee with pool setup. And the fourth and final one's going to be high level T-bow setup with the pool. So the first setup I'm going to talk about is the budget setup without the use of rejuvenation pool. So it is a pretty straightforward setup. You want to have the Slayer Helmet imbued so that you can get the damage and accuracy bonus for all three styles. As you'll be using all three at Sire. Backpack, your best Ava's backpack. The necklace, at least a glory Ava Fury here if you can afford. Blessing, peaceful blessing if you want to be cheap because this one I think is the cheapest at under 10k. Weapon, I highly recommend the art lights because it's essentially free but you do have to do a decent amount of the catacombs to use it but most people should. If you don't have it, I guess at least a whip is fine. For the top and bottom, you're going to be using a combination of melee and range. So for melee, I would at least go for Barrows. Uh, Torax is really good, really high defense for cheap. You're going to be switching uh, between that and Dehyde. So if you have God Dehyde, use that over regular Black Dehyde. For a shield, I highly recommend a Dragon Defender. That is going to be really useful and of course very cheap. Barrows Gloves, of course. 
Dragon Boots at least very cheap to get. And for a ring, if you don't have a Berserker ring, then you can get away with a Warrior's ring. It should do fine. The difference should be very negligible as you'll want that slash bonus anyways if you don't have the strength bonus. Now for the inventory, you're going to want a ranged weapon switch. So earlier on in the mechanics I explained uh, something like a crystal bow that's fast, long range, or a blowpipe. So if you don't want to learn how to use the crystal bow, then you can use the blowpipe and I'll explain it in the demonstration later on. And uh, you want to bring a decent amount of food. This is for emergency if you get comboed out really hard in the middle of the fight, especially third phase, and you really can't go for a heal. Okay, so the potions is super combat and ranging potion. If you don't got super combat, just bring the equivalent in regular super potions. For stamina potions, I recommend to bring as many as you feel you'll need to extend your trips. I bring three, but I guess when you're starting off, you might only want to try for a few kills a trip, and then in that case, you might only need one stamina. So maybe you want to start off with one or two. I bring a brew because it's nice to you know beef up to 100 plus every time you uh, pot up with super combat. Uh, you want to bring a combination of super restorers and prayer potions. At least one super restorer if you're going to bring a brew to offset the negative stats. So anyways, we have antidote because you will get poison occasionally. So at least an antidote is really good so you can stay there for a long time without worrying about poison residual damage. Uh, down here, I got the lunar staff. You're going to need that or drama staff for your fairy ring to get to the sire layer. A teleport of your choice, a house tab is nice, but anything is fine. Uh, here I got air runes, which you're gonna need for the shadow spells. And inside my rune pouch, I have soul, bloods, and death, so I can use blood barrage and also use shadow barrage. So you don't need to use blood barrage, but I highly recommend that you get at least the ability to use blood burst. You should be able to, because I would at least recommend. The ability to use the shadow blitz so if you don't have rejuvenation pool but for some reason you have access to these very expensive items then you can also use a setup like this instead of the budget setup so the main difference besides obviously having straight upgrades to the previous items is that I brought a warhammer so instead of using the Art Light spec as my main weapon spec, I'll be using the Warhammer instead because it's more effective as you'll reduce more defense and make the kill go by faster. And also, I'm bringing two amulet switches. The Torture is for melee and then the Anguish is for range. And as for that, everything else is pretty much the same. So this setup is the high level melee setup with the use of rejuvenation pool this is the setup that i personally prefer to use because it is uh to be honest with you out of all of my sire experience this is the best setup that i i have discovered so i'll go through some finer details so obviously i i'm wearing the best offensive uh, strength orientated gear in the game for melee we got a fertile cape torture a Furnate Defender, and Berserker Ring Imbued, Primordial Boots. And anyways, there are a few differences from the budget version of this setup that uses the Rejuvenation Pool, and that is the Warhammer and the Dragon Claws. And another thing to note is that I don't use Lunar or Dramon Staffs to use the Fairy Ring because I already have the Lumberj Elite Diary done, so I actually don't need the Staff to actually use the Fairy Ring, so I save an inventory space. So my inventory is quite hollow, there's quite a bit of inventory space, but that's because I use the empty space to pick up drops. And these 6 Manta Rays, I might not even use them at all during like 20-30 kills. This is just like emergency if I get really bad RNG and the kills go slow and I might need to eat a Manta Ray or something, but usually I, I don't. But yeah, I go hard on the ranging potions, I bring more ranging than super combats because ranging boosts isn't as high as super combat so I tend to drink this a bit more often so you know I compensate for that by bringing a few more doses you know over super combats and instead of teleport tabs to your house I have a construction kit which does the same exact thing but it's infinite times to my house so I don't have to worry about running out of tabs so I didn't mention the viability of the site but I guess I'll talk about it briefly 
If you do have a scythe, you could bring it for Sire, but I would only recommend it for the second phase of Sire, just because if you try to use the scythe on the third phase of Sire, you're probably going to splash a lot of your hits on the minions instead of the boss, which would make the scythe not that good. So the scythe should be best in slot on the second phase, at least if you lower its stats for sure. But on the third phase, the artlet is 100% better. So the last setup I want to talk about is the twistable method of Sire. So instead of using like an art light to smash down Sire, you're going to be mostly using the twisted bow to damage Sire. So your gear is going to be shifted towards more range accuracy and range damage. So you're going to be bringing the archer's ring, the Pegasian boots. And you're going to still need some support for melee though because the key to fast twisted bow kills at Sire is going to be the Warhammer. So you want to bring the Warhammer and if you can bring some support gear with it, at least a Torture, uh, maybe with some Tyrannical Ring and Inferno Cave Primary Boots to give you that extra crush accuracy so that you can land the spec. Because if you don't land specs with the Warhammer on Sire, the Twisted Bow gets pretty slow. You'll be missing a lot and you are wearing some pretty uh, you know low defensive gear so if this fight gets dragged out longer, you're going to get hit a lot harder than say you you know when you were in bandos with art light right so it's more so important in this setup that you land your warhammer spec so anyways if you want to you can probably replace inferno cape with a mist cape for the accuracy so that's six crush instead of three for inferno cape so i guess the myth cape is probably a bit of a better choice for this method you can choose to bring bandos or not but honestly you don't need to bring bandos because you can take off armadillo and spec with this and Banos doesn't give you any more accuracy anyway, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And you'll save some inventory slots. It's time for me to explain how to fight Sire with the different setups. So for the budget melee setup, the main things I want to go over is how to use a crystal bow. Because this is actually an amazingly good method over the blowpipe as you'll save a shit ton of energy and you can also kill the respiratory systems a bit faster as well if you learn how to use it and I'll be explaining some of the more important parts of the fight such as where to step on the third phase and a few of the other uh, crucial mechanics that will make the fight easier so to start off you want to wake up the boss you know you can hit uh, anything use a crystal ball hit once it wakes up immediately rush the boss with your shadow spell wait till it says it's disorientated if you're not using the barrage one because it might not be 100 percent once the boss is disorientated make sure you click on the spot where i move to now make sure you stand there so that you can kill the respiratory system on the right northern one and once you kill it you want to immediately click on the southern one you can usually figure this out using sp drops ahead of time but the moment you click on the southern one from that spot, your character, as you can see, will immediately shoot the second respiratory system super quickly. Crystal Bow is so far distance. But by the time you finish the second one, uh, it'll probably wake up, especially if you're lower level. And when it wakes up, just camp for it and use Barrage, Shadow Barrage or Shadow Blitz and make it go back to sleep. And you should be all set. And once that happens, go for the northeastern one. And make sure you stand at that spot again where I was. And once that's killed, go on the southern one and your character will immediately path to the last respiratory system and get there as quick as possible and then just finish it off. For phase 2, I highly recommend you start off at this exact spot where I am because it usually likes to throw a poison at the very beginning. So if you stand at this spot, your goal is to wait for the boss to have an attack option. The moment you see that, attack the boss. That way your character will get pulled away from that spot where you were and it will automatically dodge the poison. And then what you have to do for phase 2 is really simple. Keep your prey melee on at all times. Uh, obviously have your piety. And for every two art light hits, simply go under the boss because that way it will minimize its attacks which is really good for you. So every two hits, go under the boss, wait a solid second, and then attack the boss again, and you're golden. And wait till it goes down to 200 HP. So phase three is the hardest part because you have to be really knowledgeable about the spots that you kind of have to be at for this phase. So when you start off, you want to be under the boss, either on the left 
side or the right side I've marked the squares either is fine but basically when it's charging and when it starts giving you the attack option it will immediately spawn a poison under you so by being under the boss on one of those squares when you attack the boss your character again will automatically move itself to the outside of the boss and you'll automatically dodge the poison the first time so you're gonna get a hit on the sire boss and then you're gonna go for a second hit on the second hit the next set of poison should spawn under you and that's your cue to move so after the second hit you're going to move two squares to the left or the right depending on where you started it's a very simple cycle every two hits you do with your weapon whether it's you know a t-bow or art light or whatever you're gonna move to the opposite side two steps that way you can continuously dodge the poison while attacking the boss and another important thing you need to know is that uh, if you alternate between the two sides correctly the whips on the surrounding area should not be able to attack you so it's important that you try not to randomly move out too far to the left or too far to the right because you know there are whips so in the map uh, there is a boundary line that shows when the whip can hit you and when it can't so obviously you'll be able to dodge the whips and the poison if you learn how to start off in the right spot and moving two squares every two attacks to uh, dodge the poison so once the boss gets to 1-3 HP, he's going to teleport you next to him and that means he's going to explode and do 70 plus damage if you're next to him. So make sure you run south when that happens. So if you are in need of healing, make sure you run all the way south and then take a little bit uh, of a turn to the west where my character is. So that way you can trap a bunch of them. Uh, in a safe spot, use that time to quickly heal up with your blood burst or your blood barrage and yeah try to be quick do two heals try to get to like back to 4 hp quickly and then run all the way back up to the boss and try to finish him off remember to keep yourself in the safe spots so that the whips don't hit you and remember if the poisons do spawn you can do two attacks on one side before you move so that the poison can be dodged and two attacks again so if you can't finish them off without healing another time, you can always go back to the safe spot to heal or you can run north and try to heal some while you know these guys are trying to chase after you. But essentially just do a combination of the healing and running to the sides every two attacks, dodging the poison until it dies. And you should have the kill. So the next setup I want to talk about is the high level setup without the use of rejuvenation pool and mechanically in terms of how you deal with the fight it's pretty much the same as the in-depth explanation for the budget non-rejuvenation pool setup that I was showing you directly before in this setup so there's really only one difference though is that is the Warhammer spec so instead of using the art light spec in the beginning you use the Warhammer spec so you're gonna go for one Warhammer spec per kill you're not going to want to do two because you're going to be here for multiple kills so you want to make the most out of your warhammer specs so the important things to remember is on phase two make sure you go for two hits and then go under the boss use that time to eat up or just to stall his attack as recommended on third phase start at the important two squares left or right inside the boss and then go for two hits every two hits alternate and go to the left or the right whichever you know you're not on and then once the explosion comes after 130%, go to the safe spot and heal up quickly. Once you're healed up, position yourself correctly again so that you can, you know, dodge the poison every two hits. And just keep alternating your attacks in left and right until it dies. So the next setup I want to talk about is the high level melee setup with Juvenation Pool. My recommended setup that I use. So about 85% of the tactic is pretty much the same as what I've explained previously but I'm going to explain the nuanced things that I do that's different from the rest of the setups so the difference is usually the way I use my spec weapon so I bring dragon claws alongside my dragon warhammer it's a nice touch just because I genuinely believe it does speed up the kills a good amount especially on the last phase where killing it fast is really important 
So here's how I go about it. I always start off with, of course, a Warhammer spec, right? But you see, you have two specs every time because you, you have Rejuvenation Pool. So I don't always land both my Warhammer specs. I only land two Warhammer specs if the first one misses. If the first one lands, then I save that 50% spec for my other spec weapons, like a Dragon Claw or maybe a Crystal Halley. Although the Crystal Halley is probably not not really worth bringing. So the Dragon Claws will then be used on the third phase after the explosion. I don't use it before the explosion because sometimes it'll cancel out some of the damage and it will null it as you teleport. So I always save it for after the explosion. But anyways, as you know, during phase two, you always have to go for an extra hit before it moves on to the second and third phase. And it's the same for the explosion charging phase. You're always gonna have to do an extra null hit before it actually teleports you. So what I do is I put my claws on when I know that it's gonna teleport me on the next hit. And then I just attack it with an auto attack because it doesn't matter what I hit. It'll just move you to the charging explosion attack. So once the explosion attack happens, I, I'll have my claw spec ready and then I just rip him through with that claw spec. And it usually hits really hard, you know, be like 60, 70, 80. So it just pretty much terminates this boss post explosion within a few hits with the Dragon Claws. So that's what I bring it for. And it's really nice. And also because I'm using the POH, what I do is that instead of immediately going to my POH after I kill the boss, instead I kill all four respiratory systems and I make sure they're all dead first, right? Once I know that they're dead for sure, I go to my house and then I heal up. That way I skip the whole uh, transitioning animation from phase 1 and 2, which saves a lot of time. This is definitely the best way to use your pool. I highly recommend you, you get used to this because it will save you a lot of time. Maybe probably 10-20 seconds a fight. So the last setup I want to talk about is the Twisted Bow setup. So it's one of those setups that it's gotten popular just because a lot of people perceive it as the best method. But to be honest with you, after extensive experiments with all these setups, let me tell you, this is not the best method. The Art Light and maybe with a Scythe for the first phase is by far the best method because of the fact that T-Bow is heavily reliant on the Warhammer. If you don't land any specs, which happens a good amount, you will have a hard time killing the boss quickly. So, and the fact that you're using Armadillo Armor means you're gonna tank some unnecessary hits, which means you have to eat and heal and, and all that stuff. Whereas the melee setup, you pretty much never have to heal, even if you don't land Warhammer Specs. It's really rare, as long as you're doing it right. So yeah, some kills you get really fast, but there's a good amount of kills where it's pretty mediocre. So I would say use this at your own risk, maybe for people with lower defense that can't tank as much, or maybe like peers or something. So now I'm going to explain the nuance difference between like say something like a T-Bow and say something like an Art Light. So when you're using melee on third phase, you're usually up close and personal for most of it. After the third phase, you don't actually have to use the Twisted Bow at a close distance against the boss because you're ranging, you don't have to do that. It's only really recommended in the beginning of the third phase because you know, you want to just follow the two attacks, dodge the poison by going to the other side tactic. But yeah, post explosion, you can just attack it from far away and move two steps uh, away from the poison spot at a distance. And you can always run really extremely north as well because the mobs is going to start eventually clustering near you. You don't want the mobs to be next to you because they will hit you really hard. You have to you know, pay attention to the distance of the mobs between you and yourself. So try to get distance from the mob, attack the boss, dodge the poison, and that's about it. So this is post editing. I'm pretty much wrapped up with the editing, but damn, 29 minutes, but I couldn't make it any shorter because I wanted to give you guys all the good information that you need, you know, from a beginner's perspective to a high level player's perspective. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the Abyssal Sire guide and found it to be very informative because I put in so many hours on this guide. It's, it's crazy. I don't even know how much, maybe 30 hours, 20 hours, something along those lines, just to do everything. But if you guys found this guide to be very helpful or enjoyable, feel free to give it a like as it'll tell me that I'm doing a good job. And if there's any additional questions, you can ask me on YouTube or on Twitch when I'm streaming. 
or if you have any feedback for guides for next time also let me know so the next guide I'm gonna be doing is Warcat there's no dates on it though because um, fortunately I'm just very busy and it's going to be very hard to set another date for that one but anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys soon with another video uh, sometime soon hopefully by a week's time alright take care and bye bye